Why do interest rates matter? In today's video, we're going to answer that question. But first, I'm Scott Kerr with Forex Signals. And each week, my fellow analysts and I deliver amazing video content right here to our YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that subscribe button because today we're talking interest rates, what they are, how they affect the financial markets, and most importantly, how you and I as traders can profit with our understanding of them. You're not gonna wanna miss today's video. So to understand interest rates, really what interest rates do is they control the money supply. And to understand that, we need to understand how money comes into circulation. So whether we're talking about pounds or euros or yen or the US dollar, money comes into circulations through lending, whether it's a brokerage lending out margin or money for investors to buy stock with, or whether it's banks that loan out money for someone to come in and take out a mortgage to buy a home loan or to take out an auto loan to buy a car with. When that money gets created, there's a cost to that borrowing. When interest rates are higher, people will borrow less because it becomes very, very expensive. When interest rates are lower, people will borrow more because the cost of borrowing is a lot less. And so there is an expansion of the money supply. So you can see right here in the central bank rates, the central banks around the world, they get to decide whether they want to raise the rates or increase the cost of borrowing, or they want to lower rates and they want to decrease the cost of borrowing. And again, that controls the money supply. So higher rates means that there's less borrowing, it's too expensive, it contracts the money supply, less people are going out to get uh, home loans or auto loans or margin to buy stocks. And inversely, when they lower rates, it increases the money supply where investors now will borrow more money to buy stocks or they'll go out and they'll refinance their house or get a new mortgage to buy a new home or, or a new car. And so it increases the money supply. And every central bank rate, every central bank gets to decide whether they want to raise rates or lower rates. So they're actually in charge of actually setting that actual bank rate. So you can see the Bank of Canada right now has rates set at two and a half percent. The Bank of New Zealand is also at 2.5%. The, the Federal Reserve of the United States is 1.75. Australia is 1.35. The Bank of England is currently sitting at 1.25. And the Eurozone is actually zero, right? So they're actually at zero. It's very, very cheap to buy or to borrow money in the Eurozone. And the Japanese yen is actually negative. So it's very, very cheap. They actually are incentivizing you to borrow because interest rates are actually negative in Japan as well as Switzerland. Okay, so how exactly does this information, how can we use this as traders to actually understand how this is going to affect the financial markets? Well, let's take a look at the S&P 500 and so you can kind of get an idea of what the Fed's doing, whether they want to raise rates or lower rates and how that affects the financial markets. So if we all remember back in March or April of 2020 when COVID first started, there was a lot of fear in the marketplace. The market had been kind of going up for a while, and then we had this big, big decline in the markets. The market actually crashed very, very quickly, actually went down almost 30%. And at the very, very bottom here, the Fed decided to cut rates, which were currently about 2.5%, all the way down to zero. So what they did in, in that respect is by taking rates and lowering them all the way to zero, they incentivized stock investors to go out and borrow money, which is called margin, to go ahead and buy stocks with. So now the investors could go out there and basically borrow for zero and they could they could start buying into the stock market. And you can see that created a massive, massive bubble in stocks as it pushed stocks to the very highest price they've ever been. But then we, we see recently here about seven months ago, the Fed started doing something different. Right. They saw that all the uh, they saw that all these asset classes like real estate and stocks and bonds were all going to all time highs. And because of all the because of all the increase in the money in circulation, they started seeing a lot of price inflation. Just like right now, we know if we go to the pump, we're paying a lot more for gas. We're paying a lot more for food. So the Fed looks at that and says, wow, we have inflation. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to start raising rates to fight the inflation. OK, so the other thing that that the money supply does is when you raise rates because there's price inflation, food and gas are getting more expensive. What it will do is it'll it'll strengthen the currency, because if you if you think about it, the U.S. dollar, if the central bank is offering a higher rate of return in U.S. banks by raising rates, it's going to attract foreign investors, investors, investors like from Japan or the Eurozone that are actually getting zero return on their money sitting in a savings account. They're going to sell their euros or their yen to buy U.S. dollars with. And that's going to create demand for U.S. dollars. It strengthens the dollar. But on the other side of that, all that cheap money that was going to the stock market 
when rates were at zero now they're pushing rates higher guess what happens then it pushes the markets down okay so one way we can use this information in the financial markets is understand what the fed's doing if the fed is lowering rates right that's going to have a booing effect on the stock market because again the money supply gets increased because more people are borrowing they're borrowing that money to put into the stock market to push the stock markets higher and of course just the opposite effect of what we've seen where the fed starts tightening or to start raising rates because they have to fight inflation right on the other side of it but of course the effect of that now is more expensive to borrow to buy stocks and so what happens is stock prices go down let's take a look at real estate because real estate is another asset class that had the same effect during uh, during COVID now this is the IOIR this is the US um, real estate ETF so this is an ETF an exchange traded fund that's made up of many different holdings uh, real estate investment trust um, home builders uh, store uh, storage facilities uh, real estate investment trust that owns office building residential so just kind of a broad scope when it comes to the uh, the real estate market commercial and residential as well as home builders so we can see back in in April of 2020 we had a huge big drop when COVID hit right COVID hit and a lot of these places office buildings obviously were suffering the 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 prices started to come down because now people of course were uh, working from home because of their uh, the pandemic uh, when we saw a lot less economic activity so you know, the storage units weren't making a lot of money in that sector of real estate so the IYR just plummeted from a price of 100 all the way down to 55 almost a 55 percent drop in the overall real estate ETF that kind of covers the broad scope of, of of real estate now what did the Fed do the Fed at this point decided to cut rates all the way down to zero now what did that do that freed up a lot of money so now big investors could go out and they they could get mortgages for very cheap they could get commercial mortgages for very cheap whether they're buying office or apartment buildings or storage facilities or residential real estate whatever it was the it increases the money supply and what happened to real estate prices right it created a massive surge in real estate across all sectors of real estate and then we can see here just recently about six months ago just like stocks the Fed decides to start raising rates because they have to battle inflation right so by raising the rates they're going to actually try to increase the strength of the dollar to, to try to damper the inflation the price inflation that of course we're seeing in food and energy but then of course on the other hand what does that do to certain asset classes like real estate we start to see real estate coming down okay so investors what we want to do is we we want to kind of adhere to something that I learned a long time ago and that is never ever fight the Fed okay one of the easiest ways to make money is just a front one front run with the Fred <laughs> is just a front run what the Fed is going to do so if the Fed is talking about how they're going to be raising rates right we want to be shorting stocks we want to be shorting the real estate ETFs we want to be shorting the bond market that's another market that has a big exposure to interest rates now when as the markets continue to come down and the Fed starts saying okay you know what I think inflation is under control right I think that we're going to probably stop raising rates and we're going to at least pause on this and maybe start looking at lowering rates that's when we're going to find a bottom in real estate that's when we're going to find a bottom in the stock market right because the stock market is just going to follow what the Fed does okay so you can be uh, a more astute investor and understand the best plays in the market by just following what the Fed is going to do okay so if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit that like button and feel free to put some comments in the chat and don't forget to follow us on all of our social media I'm Scott Grew with Forex Signals and I'll see you in the next video